Hi there everybody, I'm here today with my horse tattoo and I want to do a riding lesson to talk about the subject matter of adjustability with you. So I'm going to do two riding lessons in a row with tattoo. The first one we're going to cover walk and trot and then the second one we'll do some canter work. So I'm hoping that you have been practicing your leg yields and your lateral work because those movements are going to help us today show you how you can get your horse started with some adjustability work. And what do I mean by that is I, we want to be able to take our horse from a short stride to a long stride. So being able to adjust the length of stride within each one of the horse's gates. Okay. So we're talking about our collection which we're gonna use our lateral work to help us get our horse a little bit more collected. And then we're gonna send the horse out into bigger, longer strides. Okay, so um, again, we have a lot to cover. I could have done a groundwork class to um, explain some of ways that you can get your horse started using their body that way on the ground, but I am going to save that for future videos where I'd like to do sort of a little mini series and show you um, how you can use cavalettis on the ground and under saddle to do work that will help improve all of the subject matters that we've already gone over in this video series. But so for today, we're gonna talk about adjustability and um, we'll get going. So I'm gonna get Tattoo moving out to the left and we'll start some work at the walk. So before I actually ask him to do any adjustments in his walk. I'm just going to work on a little bit of review with him on the turn on the forehand, okay? And instead of doing it like a turn to change direction as if I were going up the wall and, and flexing him to the outside and turning him around, I'm just gonna do it to the inside. So I'm gonna come back towards the camera and get tattoo moving. And I'm gonna ask him to do a few steps, turn on the forehand. I'm gonna flex him left. I'm gonna turn my body towards his left hind leg and ask him to cross that hind leg under. So he turns around, nice, nice flexion, nice bend through his body, and that left hind leg is turning under him. And I'm gonna change direction and I'm gonna try that a little bit the other way. So right flexion, turning my body a little bit right towards his inside hind leg. And I want him to pick that foot up off the ground and cross under. So I get some nice cross under that the horse gets nice and soft and relaxed through his body, but also comes together a little bit, okay? So now what I wanna do is I'm going to go back to our circle exercise that we used to develop contact and see if I can add on to it to develop a little bit of collection. So we're gonna get him going onto the 10 meter circle. And as I'm turning around that 10 meter circle and I'm almost finished with the circle, I'm gonna do a little bit of that turn on the forehand feeling, right flexion, get that right hind leg crossing under. And then I'm gonna use both legs to send him forward. And I'm gonna bring him out to the 20 meter circle. And I'm gonna ask Tattoo to use his hind legs a little bit more. I'm gonna let my hip swing a little bigger and see if I can convince him to take a longer stride at the walk. Tattoo can really use a lot of work at the walk, so this is good work for him. Again, I'm gonna come onto my 10 meter circle and I'm gonna keep my hips swinging and I'm gonna to try to get him to sort of collect a little bit by get that turn on the forehand feeling as I'm walking around the 10 meter circle. So you see how as I'm doing that, he's coming together a little bit from back to front. And then I can let him both legs on, let my arms follow a little bit and try to get him to take bigger steps. So it's almost like that 
turn on the forehand feeling is kind of like revving up the engine behind you and getting some push power from them. So if you're the kind of person that maybe that's not resonating with you, the turn on the forehand, you could think about the shoulder in that you've been practicing. Try putting your horse, it's basically the same thing, but you're trying to put your horse on a shoulder in on the smaller circle. So here I'm more of using my shoulder in aids to go around the smaller circle and getting tattoos right hind leg, charged up, keep on that shoulder for position and then letting my hips swing a little bit bigger so he gets a little bit bigger longer in his walk. So what I'm doing now is more of an extended walk where there's still contact. His neck is long, the reins are long, but I still have contact. So once you feel like you can kind of convince your horse to relax and stretch their neck down, you can try a little free walk across the diagonal. And you're gonna set that up the same way, either a little shoulder fore feeling, or if it is easier for you to think of the turn on the forehand, get the legs charged up and then let the reins get long all the way to the buckle. Your hip is gonna swing along with your horse's back a nice longer swing for the longer stride. And then when you get to the other side, short in, your hip swing and then you can bring your horse back into that either that turn on the forehand feeling or that shoulder in feeling whichever one of those is sort of easier for you to perform and then you just go back and do everything the opposite direction so i'm going to see if i can <laughs> wake tattoo up a little bit if he can there give me a better march one thing to think about when you're working on developing lengthenings or medium gates is your tempo. So classically in dressage, you don't want your tempo to change. So remember that your tempo is the speed of your rhythm. So we have a four beat rhythm here at the walk. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Tattoo gives me a longer stride. I don't want him to get faster. I just want him to get longer. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, tattoo. I do have to work hard to keep the speed going. And then I'm gonna short my reins. So that was a free walk across my half 20 meter circle. And I'm gonna bring them back into that little bit of turn on the forehand. This time I'll try the extended walk. Just keep thinking about one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Keep that hind leg charged up and then my leg will press, my hip will swing bigger. Then I'm gonna see if I can get more of a medium walk out of him. So you can see Tattoo's walk isn't quite as nice as a spree. So he, this is good work for him. The adjustability to get him to use his hind legs a little bit better and to actually relax through his back a little bit better so he can get longer strides. Okay, so I'm gonna try the same exercise now at the trot for you and then I'll show you how you can take it off the circle and bring it, bring your lengthenings down the long wall or the diagonal. So get tattoo going. I'm gonna turn onto my 10 meter circle and pick up my trot. I can start at rising trot. So when your horse is first just starting to work on lengthenings, you don't have to sit and then rise, you can rise. I'm gonna think that little bit of turn on the forehand feeling as I'm trotting and then bigger trot and a bigger swing to my post and then I'm gonna get a shorter swing to my post and then get that turning feeling back from tattoo, back that almost like you're gonna do a turn on the forehand at the trot to help you develop a little bit of collection. Start teaching your horse that there is more than one length of stride in there. I want you to notice when I go 
back to my lengthening that I'm gonna post a little bigger to encourage a tattoo. And then when I get back to the circle, I'm gonna turn my body towards his inside hind and post a little shorter. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight ahead and I'm gonna try that turn on the forehand feeling through my corner and then through the next corner and then lengthen a little bit down my long side. When I get to the next corner to bring it back, again, I'm gonna turn my body and get that turn on the forehand feeling. And then I could go across the diagonal. And now I have to flex right and get a turn on the forehand feeling to the right. So once you've changed direction, just go nice and easy down the long wall here and go back to our circle exercise so that we develop both sides equally. But as I go around my, around my 10 meter circle, I'm turning my body towards that inside hind, getting that turning feeling and then both legs on, big swing for a longer stride. And then turning to bring the trot back. Yeah, big push and swing. So you wanna think of that smaller circle as what's getting your horse's hind legs charged up and ready to go. Really bringing that hind leg up to your hand. Make sure you're going with your horse. Nice big swinging pose for a bigger trot. Then I can bring it back and go straight ahead. So I'm just gonna try that through the corners. And big trot. Little turn on the forehand feeling and a lengthening down the long side. Nice big trot. And turn. Go. And I'll try one across the diagonal. Really getting tattooed to soften. Turn straight and then go. And then I flex left. Get that turning feeling left. And he can have a little rest. Okay, so that is one good way to start getting your horse used to coming back to you and getting a little bit longer. It's the coming back after the lengthening that's usually the hardest. So I find that that concept of when you're finished with your lengthening to feel for that little bit of turn on the forehand where you get that little extra flexion, get that hind leg under them is helpful for people so they don't feel like they have to pull back and then actually lose their trot, lose their tempo, right? We wanna keep that tempo the same. We don't really wanna interrupt the trot that much. We just wanna shorten the stride. So that turning feeling generally helps. And as I mentioned earlier, if it suits you better, you can try it doing more of a shoulder in instead of pushing the hind leg out towards the rail when you come back, you could try turning the horse's shoulders to the inside. So it does the same thing. And actually for when it's time to do it at canter, we will think more about turning the shoulders in to bring the canter lengthening back. All right, so if you are on a horse that has a, a lot of go and has a tendency to run through your aids and get a little bit heavy, and you're feeling like, how the heck am I gonna get this horse to come back to me after a lengthening? I'm just gonna show you a little trick that um, somebody taught me. Actually, it was a judge that taught me this. So it doesn't necessarily work for everybody, um, but this, if, if a horse is really actually kind of lazy like tattoo or anticipate, this might not be good for you, but if you have a horse that's a little thicker, a little bit heavier, that likes to sort of just lean and run, one good thing to work on when you're starting to think about teaching your horse lengthenings is just to do a nice steady trot across your diagonal. Get them nice and straight. 
the tempo doesn't have to change, the length of stride doesn't change, just keep a nice working trot. And at the end of the line, just walk. And you're just gonna repeat that a couple of times or as many times as you need so that the horse starts to anticipate a transition, a down transition at the end of your diagonal line. Now tattoo anticipates a lot of things. So he doesn't necessarily need this exercise, but if I were riding like little Esprit, or maybe you remember Fergus from the contact lesson, the gypsy banner, has a tendency to get heavy and just sort of run. So this is a good exercise for him. And then once they're anticipating that down transition, then you can actually ask for a lengthening across. And instead of walking, you're just gonna bring it back to more collective. So go bigger. And then bringing it back. And using that turn, like I showed you, to show the difference right at the end of that diagonal line. That it got longer, and then it got shorter. All right, so let's just do a few of those lengthenings from our shoulder in. So I'm going to sort of challenge you today to practice your shoulder in and see if you can do transitions from your shoulder in position. So we're gonna get tattoo trotting and put him in a shoulder in to the right to start. And then I'm gonna see if I can do a walk transition while he's in that shoulder in position and then go back to trot. And then we're gonna take that from the shoulder in and see if we can do a lengthening from the shoulder in. And then the hard part is gonna be at the end of your lengthening to do your shoulder in in the other direction. All right, so let's get him going and I'll show you what I mean. Hopefully we've been practicing our shoulder in. So we're gonna just put tattoo in that shoulder in position. And as I'm coming down the wall, I'm just gonna walk, but I'm gonna keep my right leg working so that he stays and then I'm gonna try it again. Forward and straight across my short side. Let's see if we can do that again. Tattoo listening, good shoulder in. Yeah, and I'm practicing the timing with my leg aids. Keep with his right hind leg and then back to shoulder in again. Come on. And then straight ahead. So I'm gonna do a couple of steps of shoulder in down the next long side. And then straighten them out and lengthen across the diagonal. When I get to the other side, I wanna bring them back to that shoulder end. So now that's hard. That's why it's a challenge. It's not something you'll ever do in a show. But if you can do this, you can bring your lengthenings or your medium trot back to a collected trot. That's much easier than having to go from a lengthening or a medium into a shoulder in. Practice that shoulder in right through the corner, down the long side. We're gonna walk again, and then trot again. Good boy. Walk. So the shoulder, and you can see also, gets tattoo collected. Shoulder in through my corner, turn them straight, and go for it. When I get to the other side, shoulder in aids to bring him back. Okay, so that's your challenge. So you want to see that your lateral work is actually work that you can use to help develop your collection. A lot of people think that they have to really have good collection first before they can do the lateral work, but I want you to think of it the opposite way. 
See if you can get the horse to do some just easy little baby lateral work first. Work your way up to more and more angle and some speed and with some fluidity. And then you're gonna try your transitions like that. So I think that you probably noticed um, at the end there that tattoos lengthenings turned into mediums. Um, and I just, I can take a minute just to show you sort of the difference between a lengthening and a medium and how you just wanna take your time to progress from one thing to the other. But hopefully watching this video, you saw that our simple basic exercises of that little feeling of turn on the forehand and our circle exercise helped show the horse that they can lengthen their body. And then the more collected work we got from the shoulder in got him to sit back on his hind legs a little bit more and get that little bit more push power for a little bit more uphill into more of a medium. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one minute before we finish just to kind of see if I can show you the difference. I'm just gonna do a little 10 meter circle over here in the corner. I'm gonna do it at rising trot. And even with the lengthening, I do want to first ask Tattoo to kind of squish together, pushing my hips and my hands together, get his hind legs working. I'm going to point him across the diagonal nice and straight first, and then go and just rise a little bigger. And with the lengthening, the first level lengthening, you can let your horse's neck get a little bit longer to help you get that spine to get a little bit longer so he can lengthen his stride. And then once they're strong like that and they can do that, that's when you would move into more of your medium. I'm gonna do one more lengthening. Just gonna let his neck out a little and let him just get his whole body longer and then come back into that turn to bring it back together. So if I wanted to do a medium, medium trot, Circle again, get Tattoo paying attention. I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna see if I can get Tattoo hind legs really working and that his pole comes up a little bit. I'm gonna point him straight and really push that pole stays up. The neck stays the same length as the collected trot. So I didn't let his neck out that time because Tattoo's fit enough to do it. I'm gonna straighten them out and go up like I'm riding up a hill, keeping that pull up. Then as time goes on and you're feeling good about it, the horse is really fit, we can try to go for more of an extended trot and bring it back. Good. Okay, so lengthenings at the walk. It's basically your adjustability at the walk. You wanna be able to have a free walk where your horse's neck and head are nice and low and that they have a nice forward walk swinging and lots of freedom. And then your extended walk would be a longer neck Trying to get the horse to still have that nice swing through their body, but a little bit of connection. There's tattoo, and I can clearly work on that some more. And then your collected walk is the nice short rein. Shoulders up and light, because we've done all that work. Pole, his pole right here between his ears is the highest point of his body. And of course, we're trying to keep the tempo, the rhythm, speed of the rhythm, the same in all three. Okay, and then your trot. You have your collected trot. You're just working trot, which we've been doing all along in the series. Just a nice, relaxed, rhythmical trot that keeps steady tempo. The collected trot is gonna come from you practicing your lateral work. And then once your collection's good, you can send your horse either down the long side out onto a big 20 meter curve or across the diagonal into a lengthening where you just let the horse's neck and spine get a little bit longer to allow their stride to get out a little longer. The reason I like to try 
teaching a horse on the curved line of the circle first is because it helps you, the bending line helps you keep your horse relaxed and happy. Um, and then you can start taking it out to the straight lines. And then when you really feel like you've done a lot of good work and that you and your horse are both feeling really fit, then you can try keeping the trot, the frame of the horse's neck the same and asking the horse to do more of a medium trot. One way you can try this for your fitness level um, because it sometimes is, it's just as much of a fitness exercise for you as it is for the horse. The medium trots are hard to sit to. So what you can do is you can start off and do half of your diagonal line rising, and then you can sit the last half of it and see if you can get a little bit more out of your horse, okay? So I hope that that was helpful. I do plan on doing more videos later on in the future like little sort of mini series to build on the subject matters that we've already worked on um, so that you can see a little bit more um, a slower progression of how to get all this work done. But hopefully that gives you a good explanation, a good starting point um, to get going with your horse. If you liked this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because I am planning on making more videos with plenty more content and you won't want to miss them. All right. Well, good luck and thanks for watching.